we get asked by loads of EV owners about the use of extension leads to charge electric vehicles. Now, there's lots of safety reasons why this might not be the best option, but in this video, I'm gonna show you why this could be the most expensive extension lead you'll ever buy. Now, EV owners often end up using an extension lead because they don't want the expense of fitting what we would call a proper EV charge point. Instead, they use the granny lead that used to be supplied with a car, but is increasingly something you'll have to source for yourself. And because the lead on these isn't very long, you end up having to use an extension lead to get to the socket that you want to charge from. So we're gonna set up a little experiment just to show how much this could cost you. So I'm gonna plug this uh, competitively priced extension lead that I bought at a well-known online retailer. Probably was the cheapest one I could find. However, in terms of performance, they're all pretty similar, or the cheap ones are rather. And into that, I'm gonna plug our granny cable and charger into the car. So we're ready to charge. I'm just gonna add one more thing, and that's a plug-in power meter so we can see how much power uh, the car is using to charge. Right, so we've plugged that in, and here the charger's starting to click in, and the car is starting to charge. So let's just let that settle down for a bit. And we can see the car is already drawing 3,000 watts, which are just over uh, three kilowatts, which is what you'd expect on this kind of charger. Uh, so now I'm going to uh, slightly alter and move the power meter to the other end of the extension lead. So just quickly unplug that and plug that in there. Give it a chance to reboot again. So as I look down at the power meter at this end of the extension lead, I'm reading 2,948 watts. So between the wall plug over there and the end of the extension lead here, we've lost around 50 watts. Now, is this a problem with the meter? But actually, I think it could be something else. It's actually heat loss as a result of the electrical resistance of the extension lead. And that 50 watts is something you're paying for. Now, just to further prove the point, we can prove this using our old friend from school physics, Ohm's law, or specifically the calculation for power, which is P equals I squared R, where I is the current that is flowing through the cable and R is the resistance of it. Now using this meter here, we can click and see the power is 12.51 amps. And I've asked uh, our friends in the workshop just to measure the resistance of the extension lead itself. And that's came in at 0.37 of an ohm. So if we do our uh, Ohm's law calculation, uh, I squared, is 12.51 times itself, 156.5 times by 0.37 of an ohm gives us 57.9 watts, which matches pretty much the difference we're measuring on the meter between here and over there at the supply. So what does that power loss mean in monetary terms? Well, this is the Vauxhall Corsa E, or if you're tuning in from other parts of the world, the Opel Corsa E, and it's got a 50 kilowatt hour battery inside it. Now, if we're following the manufacturer's recommendations, we may be starting to charge when we're down at 10%, and we'll take that up to 80%. So that means adding 35 kilowatt hours of power to the battery itself, and using that granny cable, that's gonna take a long time and we've worked that out to be about 12 hours. Um, so that's, uh, that's gonna freeze you out of any, um, any variable tariffs. You're gonna probably be paying rack rate for your electricity, which in the UK at the moment is about 34 pence a kilowatt hour. So take our 54 watts of power loss in the cable, 12 hours, and that 34 pence a kilowatt hour. That means every time you're using that cable, you're paying 22 pence, which doesn't sound like a lot compared to the cost of charging the car but it mounts up. So every 100 times you use that lead, then you're gonna be paying 22 pounds in lost power, or you could call it a heating cable to keep your drive frost-free in the middle of winter. And that's actually more than the cost I've paid for the extension lead in the first place. So of course, we'd recommend you fit a proper EV charger, not just to reduce those power losses in the extension leads, but so you can lock in to some of the great tariffs that are available to charge your car off peak. And obviously with a full-blown EV charger, you can put more power into your car in a shorter space of time. Now, we also started saying about the safety issues related to extension leads. Now, if you wanna see what happens to an extension lead when you don't fully uncoil it, check out the video here that we made across on eFix 